What happened to Kamala Harris's word salads, though? She was fired up and she was fairly focused, wasn't she? She was fairly focused. And look, I, I put this through the long lens. I have seen every presidential debate since 1960 in real terms. I was a student and then a professor of presidential studies, presidential politics. And I, I've got to tell you that uh, I, you can compare these things once in a while. Sometimes they're very interesting. Sometimes they don't mean anything at all. But this was a very important de uh, debate for a simple reason. Donald Trump actually looked presidential today. He spoke for an hour and a half without stumbling. Mm. He, he spoke in complete sentences. There wasn't there wasn't a, a uh, scare of, of cognitive dissonance about this guy. He was he was on cue and he was he was right there. Now, I, I watched this very carefully in real time. And then I saw the uh, the American press afterwards you know, all the main shows, uh, the ma mainstream, and they, they all started talking about how, did, how well Ka Kamala Harris did. But you see what nobody picked up, Chris, and what really upset and annoyed me was everything she said was cribbed from her own. She self-plagiarized her nominating uh, acceptance speech at the Democratic convention in Chicago. <laughs> she didn't say anything that was different. In fact, she used the same phrases, same words, same uh, the same uh, cadence, the whole thing. She was just repeating or she was uh, sort of mouthing her, her speech. So she added nothing new to her game. What she tried to do was add facial expressions, body language, and her idea of being tough is to be um, sort of uh, uh, disruptive and corrosive. I mean, she was doing all the hateful things that she's accused Trump of all the years. Well, that's and very that, true. That smile on her. She, she slammed uh, political name calling and kind of blamed him without naming him. But she used all kinds of derogatory words to bait Trump. Words like disgrace, dangerous, extreme, they'll eat you for lunch. She was more aggressive than Trump. Would you agree? Well, absolutely. Trump was trying to be sort of a gentleman around her uh, compared compared with her who was trying to be kind of tough. Uh, it, it didn't come off very well because it was affected. She looked like she was forcing herself to to say those kinds of things. I'm sure she's not. And that smile on her face, she was staring at him like uh, some teacher who's about to beat the hell out of you with a stick. Yeah. And she had that kind of school mom thing about her. The president did. Uh, president Trump did very, very well. And um, you know the fact that the the America's press failed to pick up that um, she had uh, simply self plagiarized herself, if that's a word. She she just used everything from her nominating speech. Yep. She had nothing new to say. And in her nominating speech, we didn't know anything about her, and we still don't. Yeah. So she was as vague as hell. And what she's counting on is racing home. You know, the, the last she's in the two minute stretch here and she wants this speech, uh, this um, this debate to be over as quickly as possible. I thought she lost the argument over the Middle East. Uh, Trump nailed her on the government's weak efforts on Iran and therefore their weak efforts on terror groups. Would you agree? Absolutely, sir. Uh, she, she lost the uh, debate over the Middle East and Ukraine and, and Afghanistan. He called it the way he saw it. He said that Joe Biden hadn't called Putin in two years, that uh, the Biden administration hadn't lifted a finger to stop the killing in the Middle East or in Ukraine. Mm. These are things that the uh, America's great power could have used, not for one side or the other, but to stop the killing. She made Trump sound like a humanitarian. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and she was sound like a warmonger. She's, you know, she's cut from that same military cloth as Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Her idea of talking military is to call in the Seventh Fleet. Yep. She has no ideas about how to stop these wars. And, you know, and when she tried to get him to say, say that you don't want Ukraine to win. Well, any damn fool can see that Ukraine could never win that war. Mm. And Ukraine could never beat a nation with 11 time zones, for God's sakes. I mean, they, it was, it was a, a no brainer to start with. So, you know, she's trying to get them into these, these sort of rhetorical traps. Look, uh, you, you've given this a tie, which sort of reflects the dead heat in the polling. I'm going to give a, uh, I'm going to give him a grade. I think Trump did about a B plus and she got a C minus. I think she uh, she didn't do as well as she thought she did. The fact that she uh, covered the uh, highlights from her speech was probably all she wanted to do today. And I hope they don't have another debate because after today, there's, there's nothing more to say. It's interesting. Who would want another debate? Would any of them like to go again? 
Well, do you know a politician that doesn't want to get in front of a camera? <laughs> it's a disease that they have. Yeah, they think about, oh, well, maybe I did better than I did, or maybe I didn't do as well. Yeah. Or I'd like to say it again. It's uh, it's that uh, that old French expression about whispers on the stairwell because of things you wanted to say. Yes. Look, I think Trump did very well, and I think the idea that Trump wiped away the problems with his age and his cognitive uh, abilities, I think, was significant yeah. to me. Yeah, and. Uh, I, and, and go what ahead, did you sir. think of the moderators? What did you think? I thought the ABC journalists got it mostly right. They challenged Harris on her backflips over fracking, border policy, health care. But at one stage, David Muir challenged Trump over whether he was being sarcastic or not when he said he lost the election by a whisker. That was commentary. That wasn't playing moderator. Well, that's right. Uh, look, uh, uh, David stuck his foot in that one. What Trump meant to say, and look, Trump doesn't have a large vocabulary, okay? He's a builder. He's not a writer. What he meant was that he was trying to be ironic, not sarcastic. Yeah. You know, you can tell sarcasm a mile away. He was trying to be ironic and very clever. And when David Muir tried to catch him up on that, I thought, well, that's that wasn't really fair. Now, um, Lindsey Davis was uh, was pretty good, too. I mean, I think they, uh, they did a pretty good job. But you notice something that no one's talking about. There is a big fuss about muting their microphones when the other person wasn't mm. speaking, okay? They didn't mute the microphones. No. They got to interrupt each other for an hour and a half. Yes. And I'm thinking, did I mis uh, mis uh, misunderstand that? Someone forgot to turn off the damn mics, <laughs> yes. so they're interrupting each other. Yeah. And I thought, uh, but nobody nobody picked that up. No one in, in the American press picked that up. So I thought that was a major uh, flop on the part of the uh, the ABC. But I'll tell you what, I thought it was very interesting in terms of what she didn't say, and it was in terms of his ability to hold it together. He wants to bring the killing to an end. He wants to get the economy going again. You know, the first time around, he presided over low inflation, low interest rates, and low gasoline prices and mortgages. Uh, President Biden had the advantage of creating more jobs and reducing un unemployment for blacks and then reducing the, the debts of millions of Americans who forgot to pay their education bills, you know, so in, in a sense. But look, Americans remember how much gasoline costs and what it costs to go at the grocery store. You know, after all the great issues in American life are settled, the important thing is, can you put gas in the car and can you put food in your and your, and your, your, your basket? Mm. And my mother, who was, you know, a born peasant, used to say, if you can't fill your grocery cart, you're in trouble. 